welcome to We Don't Have Cookies with your host, Jason Marshall. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Thanksgiving episode. I've been building up to it for the entire month doing the Festival of Friendship, and today was going to be the Feast of Friendship. But if you heard the last episode, I've been sick lately, and none of that has came through. So, unfortunately, this is going to be another short show. And uh, one of the people that I was hoping to have on the show was Mama Kate. And with me right now to talk about it is Mama Kate. How you doing? <laughs> you can't prove that. <laughs> you can't prove that I'm here. <laughs> I wish you would have been on the show today, though. It would have been fun yeah. if I could have been here today. But stuff happens. People get sick. Yeah, that's the thing is none of this is anything that I could help. Yeah. And hopefully everybody's okay with that. I mean, I was pretty devastated that I wouldn't be able to make it today, but yeah. I'll get through it. I was hoping to have a thing by Mike Furman on, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, mm -hmm. he wasn't able to make it last week. He will be on next month, so everybody make sure you subscribe for that. That'll be a lot of fun. And that's the one good thing, is all the stuff I was going to do today, we can just do for the Christmas episode. <laughs> so we'll have you on for the Christmas episode, and well, it'll be fun. Well That'll be good. Yeah, because it was all just guests anyway. It wasn't really a Thanksgiving theme. It was just us getting together for the holidays. And yeah, we'll do that next month. I mean, I guess we'll still be friends next month. I mean, a lot of stuff could happen between now and next month. That's true. That's very true. Especially with me. I mean, I changed my Twitter handle to Mama Kate is angry. <laughs> like, I. <laughs> it's How a is that going? Slope to me with me. <laughs> How is that going with the Mama Kate is angry thing? Has that changed? Have you seen more people following you? Have people unfollowed you? I don't know if anybody's unfollowed me because I really don't keep track. Like, yeah. <laughs> is, Twitter is more of my own cathartic release in these times. And so I'm not really, I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them people too. And maybe I need to care about that stuff more because I think the show would grow more if I had more of a social media <laughs> yeah. presence. So if anybody out there wants to take over the social media yeah. for the show, let me know. Well, I found that it's a very <laughs> – like for the first six months that I was really using it because I had it for years, but I didn't really use it. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started using it about six months ago for realsies, and uh, it's like nobody – liked or retweeted or paid any attention to what i'd post like people would follow me but yet they don't like anything they don't say anything they don't interact with me in any way so i'm not really sure what what we're doing here <laughs> what kind of relationship this is but now like i'm actually starting to get likes and retweets so it's it's, it's taken a long time it's like twitter's very untrusting anymore <laughs> people are like wait a second you only have 400 tweets you must be a troll you know yeah, people do that a lot. If you don't have a certain amount of followers, your opinion doesn't matter and all yeah. this. I don't know. I can understand not really counting somebody's opinion if their profile picture is still an egg. Yeah. That kind of makes sense because yeah. if you haven't bothered changing that, yeah. you don't even have to use your own picture. You can use a picture of a duck. Well, <laughs> I had – I did notice that when I changed my profile from – I had a picture of my voting sticker yeah. on it. Um, and when I changed it to a picture of me, all of a sudden I started getting more followers. I got five yesterday. Out of the blue. I don't even know why. I, they just popped up some randomly on my Twitter. So so I, I do think that whether or not you have a picture of, <laughs> of like, your face, you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to a thing. Yeah. And one thing that has bothered me. Is Dan Severn, he's been on the show a few times. Mm -hmm. He's not verified on Twitter, and I think he should be. Wow, so, I'm surprised. Yeah, we're going to have to start a campaign to get Dan verified. Hmm. He's in the UFC Hall of Fame. How is he not verified on Twitter? Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> odd. <laughs> so we're going to try to make that happen either by the end of the year or next year. Maybe that's yeah. a New Year's resolution. Maybe he – is he active on Twitter? I don't know how not active really. he is on Twitter. See that – that might lay into it what kind of followers he has. I don't know. I think that's what we'll do. We'll make it a New Year's resolution to, to get, get Dan. Dan verified. Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, if Dan wants to be verified, maybe uh, he's happy with his unverified state. You know, this isn't like about Dan trying to match make for somebody that doesn't want to get married. You know, <laughs> not well, he's getting in married. A relationship. This is a shotgun wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you put it in there, Dan. And now you got to pay the price. <laughs> if you don't want to be verified on Twitter, maybe you should get off Twitter. Dan. Yeah, exactly, because it's coming for you. There's a blue check mark in your future. <laughs> Kenny Bowen's verified on Twitter. Really? Yeah, so I don't see why Dan Severin can't Well, I mean, be. that's just good for everybody to know who he's currently angry at. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this before the show. For some reason, Kenny Bowen hates Mama Kate. And I'm okay with that. He can hate me if he wants. I, I don't know Kenny Bowen from a hole in the wall. He could walk up to me and punch me in the face, and I wouldn't know who he was. <laughs> the thing that got me was I was recording. It was the last show that Maya was on. Which is his daughter-in-law. Yeah. And I said something about you. I don't know if it was before we started recording or what. And he was in the background. He was watching Monday Night Raw because mm-hmm. he had to do a review show. And he heard your name come up and he went, fuck Mama Kate. <laughs> 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 Just out of nowhere. <laughs> we weren't even talking to yeah. him. And Maya said, why do you not like Mama Kate? And he was like, i got to hate somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> I, mean, I got to assume he's still bitter about the questions things, but I can't help yeah. that he happened to be the guest after me <laughs> twice. You know, I was really trying to punish Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just think he, he gets caught up in that that bad guy manager role, yeah. <laughs> and that's just that's just how he is. Because hey, he said I, something about Stu I feel, too. I feel like a rising star to have Kenny Bolin mad at me. Like <laughs> if I'm worthy of his anger, then it must, you know, there must be something special about me. <laughs> Maybe you can get him mad enough. He'll bring you up on the Steve Austin show. <laughs> <laughs> of course, then I'd have to watch it. That would be horrible. <laughs> I just don't, I'm, I'm not a wrestling person. I don't want anybody to be like, well, she doesn't like Steve Austin. <laughs> I don't know shit about wrestling, but if it's a show about wrestling, then I'm going to be like, (laughs) turn it. Where's the remote? You know, I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, you know, if somebody asked me like, what, what's your form of recreation? I'd have to be like looking for the TV remote and or batteries because that's, that's what I spend most of my free time doing. I'd like to be watching TV, but I can't find the remote or the remote doesn't have batteries in it. So that's what I do. So what are you going to be doing today for Thanksgiving? Um, well, see, the great thing about coming from a big family is that I don't I do not do anything. My grandma still has Thanksgiving. She lives three houses down from me. They're always like, bring some chips or some water. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my mom has nine brothers and sisters. And then they all had kids. So there's like 20 30 first cousins and then second cousins, you know, we're getting into ridiculousness. So there's like 100 people that show up for this. Wow. So basically the ants do the cooking and we all, the cousins still just show up, even though we have our own kids <laughs> now. And it's just a ridiculous amount of people to put in one house. My dad on the other side, he was the youngest of six. So also, you know, ants, cousins do all the cooking. They know we have six kids, so they're always like, just show up. Like, if you you can get here before we start eating, then you've done your job. That's all we expect from you. That's nice. That is nice. (laughs) Yeah, we got to do all the cooking and all that stuff here, but Mm -hmm. I like doing that. I think it's a lot of fun. But I I just took cooked my first turkey last week. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd never cooked a turkey before because I've never had to cook a turkey before, (laughs) and... Coke gave one to my husband, you know, for Thanksgiving. I wish they would have just given us the 20 bucks or whatever. But, <laughs> I, but I did. I cooked my first turkey. I was pretty proud of myself. And uh, it turned out pretty good. I was pretty impressed with myself. I'm glad it all worked out. <laughs> and I, I wish one thing that did work out was you being on the show today. I but, know, for Thanksgiving. That yeah, would have been great. It would have been. the feast of friendship, really. Mm-hmm. But it's probably appropriate since none of your other guests like me. So... <laughs> 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 it's probably better that I wasn't at the Feast of Friendship. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. We'll have Dave Nelson on to talk about why he can't be here today. Ask him why and, he hates uh, me, too. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just start making that a standard? Like, why me, do you hate Mama Kate? Why do you hate Mama Kate? <laughs> 
Yeah, we're going to play a song real quick. And when I come back, I'll be talking to Dave Nelson. I am UFC Hall of Famer, Dan DeBee Severin. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Gobble, gobble. Scott became famous for freezing to death in Antarctica. Columbus made history thinking some island was in Dia. General Custer's a national hero for not knowing when to run. All of these men are famous. And they're also very dumb. History is made by stupid people. Clever people wouldn't even try. If you want a place in the history books, then do something dumb before you die. Nobility are famous for no reason. Mary Antoinette enjoyed her cake. She caused a revolution when she would not share, and her husband lost his head for that mistake. The Hindenburg was a giant zeppelin. Its makers made a minor oversight. Before they filled it up with explosive gas, they should fix the no smoking light. Cause history is made by stupid people. Clever people wouldn't even try. If you want a place in the history books, then do something dumb before you die. Tally ho, tally ho, our king and country's honor we will say. Tally ho, tally ho, we're marching into history and the grave. So if your son and daughter seem too lazy, sitting there watching bad TV, Remember, you should be quite grateful. At least they are not making history. Cause history is made by stupid people. Clever people wouldn't even try. If you want a place in the history books, then do something dumb before you die. Do something dumb before you die. All right, we're back, and joining me now is the person who hosts the segment Fake Advice for New Comics from Comedy A Go Go, Dave Nelson. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thank you again for uh, having me back, Jason. Oh, no problem. I was really wanting to have you on the show. Unfortunately, everybody knows from the beginning of the episode, things haven't went as planned. I was sick last week, which is when I wanted to record all this stuff with everybody. Now all that is just kind of went away. We don't have time to record. So I really wanted to talk to you about a new segment that we were going to try to do for the podcast in either December or January called The Bad Life Coach. Uh, you want to explain that to people? Yeah, that it, it stemmed off of the fake advice for new comics. And it's just you get on fill in the blank social media you google you firefox whatever your search engine of choice um you who are life coaches ceos entrepreneurs who are willing to give deemed great advice so i thought as a i, I guess in the branding term which i hate saying and dial in one side saying it part of the fake advice brand is <laughs> uh, offer uh fake life coach advice it's reassuring bad habits that I see people have. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a really good segment, man. And uh, unfortunately, nobody knows about it because you weren't able to do the show today because of my poor planning. I wasn't able to have you on, but hopefully I can have you on sometime in December and we'll tell everybody all about it. Oh, that would be great. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. And uh, sorry you couldn't make it. I, I, I'm sorry as well. Across the world, people feel annoyed. 
They share their despair Cause it's so controversial The time that they air The first Christmas commercial It's those Christmas adverts Christmas adverts Everyone gets silly When they broadcast them too early It's those Christmas adverts Christmas adverts Feel the indignation Sweep across the nation So let's all wring our hands And get mighty vexed And say they'll be advertising Christmas Just after Easter next And it may be a bummer Though we say goodbye to summer But I can't detect a trace of snow And that's because there's still Three fucking months to go It's those Christmas adverts Christmas adverts We keep failing to remember That they start them in September It's those Christmas adverts Christmas adverts The evenings are still light Yet I'm hearing silent nights Don't wanna think of gifts Before it is autumn And we all hate those kids Who've already bought them And before Halloween Their Christmas lights are seen Well I'm sorry That's too early Of course So screw you and screw your Ornamental Santa Claus It ain't even Christmas It's for ages It's outrageous Want to contact the show? Send an email to jason at we don't have cookies dot com or call nine two nine two six six nine three four two and leave a voicemail. And joining me right now is a very special guest. I'm really happy to have him on. It's my friend Choo Choo Stu. How you doing? Hey Jason. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Stu, I said that you can't be on the show anymore. Well, we got to go to break, and uh, I'll be back. Happy Thanksgiving from Mike Canistero, unless you're a turkey. This week! This week only! No money down! No payments till spring! No payments in spring! No payments in summer! No payments ever! When? This week! This week only! We pay the GST! We pay the PST! We pay for delivery! We pay for everything! How do we do it? How do we offer these fabulous deals? Volume! Volume. We got the most! The best! The worst! We've got it all! We got everything! Except one thing! What's that? We've got no store! No products! So come on down! This week! This week only! No parking problem! No parking payments! No parking lot! You don't have to park! You don't even have to come! So don't come down! Stay away! Stay at home! This week! Every week! Every year! No money down! No payment ever! That's nothing for nothing! Hello? Hey! What's hey. Uh, going on? Well, we wanted to do the Thanksgiving episode today, and I was trying to get all this stuff pre-recorded, and unfortunately, it's Thanksgiving, and I've yeah. talked to a few people, and we just haven't been able to put the show together that I wanted to put together, and I'm basically just apologizing to everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of how I picked up on it. I got your uh, your uh, Facebook message uh, a little bit ago, and... Yeah. I was reading that, and of course, I got your Facebook message a few weeks ago where you write me, hey, King, are you mad at me? Yeah, you haven't been on in a little while. Yeah, it's been been quite some while. I've been a little on the busy side and then tried to make it clear to you that uh, my life has changed a little bit since me and Cornette have parted ways and that I'm a lot busier with these damn shows than I used to be. I used to do one of my own shows a month, and then that left more time for me to go do other people's shows. And uh, you being other people. <laughs> and uh, so then you're worried that I'm mad at you. Well, I pretty much only go where I'm invited. And I don't recall being invited on any of your shows in recent times. Maybe one or two. And I thought, hell, you wanted my event instead of me. Just wanted me as an extra baggage so you could sit there and flirt with Maya for the whole <laughs> goddamn show. And uh, then I get this thing today to where you're apologizing that you didn't have time and room for me to, on your Thanksgiving show that I don't ever recall being invited to be on in the first place. 
And I take that as a bit of a slap in the face because I know goddamn well out of all the shows I've done with you that I have to be in the top, probably top five shows you've ever done. And I'm not even a comedian. You're a comedy show. I'm aware of that. You're not a wrestling show. I'm aware of that. But for me to get an email and to say that we ain't got time for you, basically is what it said. We don't have time for you or room for you to put you in a show that you were never fucking invited on to begin with. And that's kind of pissed me off a little bit. It's the reason I'm calling you. What show did you do that you didn't have room for me on? I can guarantee goddamn tell you probably that mama bitch on. What's her name? Mama Cat? Mama, mama, mama Kate. I thought it was Mama Cat, uh, but whatever. So you had room for her. She made your show, I guess. Yeah, we did a show, the show that we're doing right now, to apologize for not being able to do this show. Did she get in a letter apologizing to her that she had no room for her on the show? Apparently not. You just told me she made the show. Yeah, and one of the topics of conversation was why you don't like her. Oh, well, wasn't it nice of you to name (laughs) drop for a show that I wasn't on? Why I don't like her? I don't know. Her name's Mama Cat, Mama (laughs) Kate. She, She bitches about stupid shit. Uh, I ain't got room for people like that in my life. Now, who, who's uh, there's another stupid fuck I used to hear. Uh, <laughs> Choo Choo Stew. Blue, what's his name? Choo Choo Stew. Choo Choo Stew. I thought it was Choo Choo Blue. I thought he chewed on things until they turned blue. But, uh, so, so that stupid fuck made the show. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Why was he on and not me? Well, he's a friend of mine, and I wanted to have oh, him on. Oh, so, so your friends get on the show, and I'm apparently not a friend of yours. How long have I known you now? Oh, God. Um, five, six months at least. And I know it's been longer than that. <laughs> lying, asshole. And then on top of that here, I've probably become one of the biggest names in podcasting history. 13 years of doing the bowling alley. Now doing the brolin alley. I'm on podcast one. Are you on podcast one? No, but I, I did hear some rumors of what it had to be through Maya. Cause you never, you never talked to me anymore <laughs> that, that you're on some new network now. That's supposed to be a pretty big deal. What's that? I don't know. I'm involved in a lot of things. We just got accepted to Spotify recently. Spotify. That's what yeah. it was. Spotify. What What do you got to do to get on Spotify? I, I don't recall well, that I'm on Spotify. I think if I tell you what I did to get on Spotify, some people might be in some legal trouble. Oh, well. <laughs> and another thing I told you, you was asking me for advice. You was talking about how to improve your show, how to make it better. Hmm. One is having me on on a weekly basis, but I, I haven't had time to do that lately. But I told you to change that stupid logo that you've got and to change the <laughs> stupid name of your fucking show. We ain't got. And here I call you on Skype because it's the only way I can get a hold of you. I don't have a cell phone number or a goddamn uh, landline number on you like I have. I got a landline where people can reach me. Um, I have a cell phone. I don't activate it up much, but I do have one. And but the same fucking logo, same goddamn name. And I know I told you six months ago to scratch that, even though we've been friends for five months, as you tried to tell everybody. <laughs> and, and what the fuck? I mean, you've done nothing that you asked me for advice on. And nothing burns me up more than for people to call me for advice. Happens in the wrestling business all the time. Oh, King, what should I do to improve this gimmick? Oh, King, what, 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 what should I work for this promotion? Uh, King, should I retire? And normally I tell him, yeah, because you, you can't <laughs> retire from anything. You ain't making no goddamn money yet. So, and, and then these people never take my advice. They work for the promoters. I tell them not to work for. They do the same stupid gimmicks that I told them not to do work for companies. I tell them not to be associated with. And, and, and you're doing exactly the same thing. What can I do? What can I do to improve it? Same God. Is that, is that character? Is that really what you look like? Cause I've never seen you. <laughs> I'm Unfor- never, you really look like that. Unfortunately, <laughs> have you seen Apparently. my characters? Have you? Well, number one, you've seen me in real life because I'm a big deal. I'm on television. I'm, well, I used to be. Now I'm on YouTube shows. Me and Russo, all of our shows are video that we do over on the brand. So I know goddamn well you're seeing them. I know you see my characters. Do do I need to get my Marvel artist? Do I need to get Simon Williams with Marvel to do maybe help you out a little bit, draw you to where you look a little better? <laughs> Maybe because I better light. I would like to think I don't look like that. <laughs> well, why would you post something of what you don't look like? Well, then again, I do have the Kingpin uh, logo up there, and I, I don't. I hope to God I don't look like the Kingpin of podcast. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? I'm a big man. Maybe I do. And then, then who else did you have? I heard some some guy named Dave Nelson. Did you really have him on? <laughs> Yeah. You know who Dave Nelson is? Who's Dave that? Nelson was, was a, a frustrated lying wrestler who was under contract under under WWE 
I know who Dave Nelson is. He used to claim he played football for the Miami Dolphins. Well, no, there's no bigger Miami Dolphin fan than me. I know the history of the Dolphins going back to the days of the perfect season, to the days when we lost to the Cowboys in the Super Bowl in 1970. And then we went on in uh, 71, it was. And in 72, we had the perfect season after we learned how to lose a Super Bowl. And uh, Dave Nelson never played for the Miami Dolphins. And then the boys are in the locker room one day looking at some videos. And it turns out that Dave Nelson was a big gay porn star. Now, today, that might be a little more accepted. He might have been a, well, no, I I don't think porn stars are really (laughs) encouraged to go to the WWE, even though Paige may have another answer for that. But um, he was kind of ran out of the business because he was seen in some gay porn videos. And is that the Dave Nelson you had on? Is that the same guy? Now he's a funny guy? I don't think so. He's a white professor in Georgia. Oh, he's a white professor. <laughs> well, now this was a big jacked up black athlete that was doing gay porn, or allegedly. I didn't see that because my girlfriend wouldn't take kindly to me sitting around watching man on man action in the OVW locker room. <laughs> so, so I didn't participate in the viewing, but there were many of the, uh oh, wait a minute, many of the boys that were looking at it were greased up. They were wearing <laughs> tights. Some wearing trunks with a lot of skin. Uh oh, shit! I might have stumbled onto something here. Most of them with pillows on their laps. And a lot of them did. <laughs> yeah. God damn, you were in the locker room too. Huh? <laughs> Didn't realize you were there. <laughs> oh well, so you discover things all the time. So, so you, you had this great show without me. Apparently, <laughs> you got three jackoffs. I've got no use for whatsoever. <laughs> a white professor, you say? How old a man is he? Uh, I'd say he's, he's at the very least. I would say he's in his thirties. And it's there. Well, Dave Nelson probably about 40 by now. So, all right, might not be the same guy. And you sure he's white? Yeah, fairly sure. You're sure? Yeah. You're sure he's white? <laughs> I've never seen him. But... All right. Well, a lot of people didn't know what color Michael Jackson was either. So, you can be <laughs> fooled. You can be fooled. That is so, true. Uh, this great show, No Room for Kenny Boland, the man who was recently on Chris Jericho's podcast, one show. Recently on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, one show, and all that led to me being on my own podcast, one show with Vince Russo to where we review Raw and SmackDown every week. And the ratings from from the news I got today are higher than they've ever been before. We have set four sets of records since I have joined the Vince Russo review show. And I think me uh, putting Big Vito in his place. Uh, also led to those high ratings. And they said we had over 100,000 downloads in seven days. And that had never been done on the Realm Network Russo brand podcast one affiliation before. And only one thing has changed since uh, uh, those ratings started going up. And that was me joining the show. So that would lead me to believe that maybe I had a whole hell of a lot to do with that. And a a lot of that was probably trying to figure out what was going on with me and Big Vito. So I can certainly understand that. But as you can tell, I've become quite a big deal in the podcast business. If I wasn't before, I am now. But I was an independent before. And now I'm locked into a contract with uh, the the good folks over at the the podcast one and the Realm Network and the Russo brand. And and I still do a few independent shows here and there. And that's why I would label you as an independent. The Spotify shit ain't impressing me any, (laughs) especially if you went through illegal means to be able to get your access on the show. And um, I just thought I would call and let you know you ain't recording this, are you? No, no. All right. All right. Well, I'd rather it not because I might come off in a bad light. Because I did kind of light you up a little bit and I did kind of brag about myself a little bit, but the, uh, so yeah, do not, whatever you do, do not put this on the show. I am a man. And, my uh, being as you didn't have time for me anyway. So if you can't have time for me to come on with some prepared material and a couple of laughs and yucks, then don't you dare try to make me look bad. So, and I know how you are. You pulled that shit before <laughs> you had me and my on the show. We, we go about an hour and 55 minutes of just bullshitting with you. And the next thing I know, you've recorded the damn thing. But then again, I did ask you, hey, did you record that? And you said, well, yeah, I did. And I told you to go ahead and use it. So It was so one of the best it? episodes ever. Oh, I'm sure it was one of those top five shows that I've done on everybody else's network and everybody else's podcast. But, 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 but back to Mama, what did she do on the show? <laughs> what was so entertaining that she made your show and that I didn't? Can you tell me that? Well... I I don't think I can. You know what? <laughs> I, will, I, I will say this. She said that she was very flattered that you don't like her. Oh, she's flattered by that. that it must mean she's getting somewhere Mama if Cat. she's got we'll your attention. And I can't trust you because you, you seem like you're always oh, you can trust me. Shit. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
you're always pulling some type of sneaky shit over I there. I would never record this and not tell and you. And I can't I risk me being viewed in a bad light. I'm, I'm beloved and, and worshipped everywhere I go, and, and for people to see the real me would, would be terrible. So Most people don't and, know and I'm kind of in a bad mood most of the time. I don't like most people. Uh, apparently, you thought I liked you. I showed your ass when I, when I hit the big time. <laughs> And uh, yes, I wouldn't be talking to you now if I wasn't in a bad mood and wanted to bitch at somebody. Here it is, Thanksgiving. I don't have anywhere to go. I've alienated <laughs> everybody. Nobody loves me, really. <laughs> Not if I can't do anything good. I mean, you know where I'm at? This is a shoot. I'm going to be celebrating Thanksgiving at White Castle because people are worried that I'll say something negative about them or I'll, somebody will bring up Donald Trump or, or what have you and, and that I'll go off on them and insult them and ruin dinner. And I think that's why I haven't been invited to a lot of places. But, you know, you know shit, I just think sit here alone and watch three football games and have my vegetable stew. And I will feast at White Castle later that evening, probably with four to five double cheeseburgers would be my guess. That sounds better than with the five heathens of the apocalypse. We did five show heathens, oh, God. Oh, God. How did that show do, by the way, the five heathens of the apocalypse episode? <laughs> it went pretty well. I do wish that we could have got Damien Sandow on the show to give his side of the story. <laughs> you know what? I need to get a hold of him, and, and then maybe that'll be the show that we do. So, Mama Cass, Mama Kate, uh, what's Mama Kate? Why? Why would that be your name? Well, she's got six kids. So, Mama Kate. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess her name is Kate. That's what you're trying to tell me. Actually, it's Susan. Well, that's the stupidest goddamn <laughs> just thing kidding. I've ever heard of. <laughs> Mama Susan. Susan's actually not a bad name. Some some women named Susan are actually attractive. I don't think I've ever. <laughs> well, Kate Winslet, maybe. I, yeah. There's not a lot of pretty Kates. And, 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 and Choo Choo Blue, why was he on? What was the reason for that? Well, I felt bad because the last time he came on well, the show, he got kicked off. When Choo Choo Blue's around. <laughs> The well, last time he was on the show, he got kicked off by Dan Severn. He wasn't allowed back. Oh, the Beast. I know the Beast. Beast, good friend of mine. Took five belly to back suplexes from, well, three. I, I exaggerate. It was only three, but it felt like five <laughs> uh, from Dan the Beast Severn. Good man. I always liked Dan. How, why, how'd he get tied into your show? So there's another <laughs> one that's on and I wasn't on. How'd he get on? Well, <laughs> Where, where's the top five shows he's ever done with you? <laughs> What happened was he kicked you name dropped me and he's at all oh, bowling. Bowling does a show. Sure. I'll do shows with you. That's what you did. Isn't it? <laughs> well, you actually, dropped my name and he agreed to come on and he's probably wondering where the hell Kenny bowling is. <laughs> Stu sung a song about do uh, heart. <laughs> no. Choo choo Stu sung a song called we... sung shit. To be honest <laughs> with you, I know you're lying now. <laughs> Plus your lips are moving. <laughs> Stu sung the song. We don't give a damn about the whole state of Michigan as a punishment. And I kind of like that song. <laughs> Dan Severn is a Michigan resident. Oh, and, oh take that, I'll yeah. take that back. <laughs> that's, I love Michigan. I didn't realize he's a resident. That's why I didn't stand well, up for Stu. Well, the Steiner boys come from up there too, you know. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I didn't stand up for Stu. I couldn't do it with Dan right there. And he lives, he lives a hell of a lot closer than Stu does. Stu's over well, in London. Well, you might have a point there. And then I, I wonder what that is about that. You've got the Steiner boys and, and, and Dan the Beast Severin and, and of course, Minnesota, well known for wrestling. Mm -hmm. What is it about that makes men want to get uh, in tights and get on their hands and knees and have <laughs> another man grab behind them and wrestle around on the floor like that the way they do up north? It's not that big a deal. Iowa, it's all these be northern the cold places. Air, huh? yeah, I'm starting to think maybe these men are wanting to snuggle up with each other is the only thing. I, <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong. I'm sure that ain't why Dan to be Severin did it. And maybe the Steiner boy. I need to find out where all these people are located to make sure they don't come down here to Louisville, Kentucky, upset about things that I, that I, so you know, don't repeat that shit either then. Keep oh, that, I, yeah. I, I none of this Dan is Severin thinking that I made any innuendos about him because he likes to <laughs> wrestle men in the cold on, on a, on a rubber mat, uh, wearing not a lot of clothing. I can't no, have that. No one's going to hear this. Trust me. <sighs> thank God for that. Um, so, uh, I guess I can squeeze in a show here with you down the road. What, what are you looking at? What do you want to do? House December. It's a ways down the road. It's next month. Eight shows a month with Russo. A couple yes. independent shows going there. I did shooting the shiznit the other day. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Did you hear about what I did over there? I heard you did record numbers over there, Broke too. Broke the all-time record. The record was, so today the numbers came out and that I have more than doubled 
Tom Robinson's record of 32,000 downloads. And they're up and comer podcast group. I mean, they ain't been around 13 years. It's only their third year. And their record show was Tom Robinson, who was on the 605 with Brian Last. Brian Douchebag Last is what I know him as. Oh, was that the guy you told me to get a hold of? Because I tried to find him on Facebook and I couldn't find him. Why would I tell you to get a hold of Brian Last? No, the other guy. Oh, Tom can, Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tom Robinson. I, yeah, I'd I like to have him on sometime. On Facebook, but he's on Twitter. Are you on oh, Twitter? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, look for him on Twitter okay. and uh, just uh, dial in. I think he goes as TR Shocker. Okay. And he did like seven different characters. And, and by the vote of the 605 people, 70% voted him the number one character on the show. And he did like six or seven of the characters. Wow. He's, he's been doing stand-up comedy for a long time in the Philadelphia market. And I highly recommend you try and get a hold of him. TR Shocker telling me that I told him about you. Okay. Uh, but I don't know that he's on Facebook. And if he is, it ain't much. He's mainly a Twitter guy. And uh, so look him up on Twitter. Tom, uh, it's Tom Robinson. And I think he goes by TR Shocker. So you enter both of those things and, and you'll find him. And uh, he'd probably be a good guy to have on your show. As a matter of fact, I promised him you would. Okay. So don't make me look bad, bitch. <laughs> well, now I don't know if I'll have him on. Oh, I think you'll have him on. <laughs> the sad thing is that you've sent me pictures of your home and I saw the street sign. Oh, so okay, that yeah. wasn't real smart. And I've been wanting to come up here and see that skunk that I think you may have killed anyway. Poor little skunk. <laughs> yeah, He's fine one all day and all skunk. of a sudden nobody can find him the next day. I'm just kind of wondering what's happened to that little skunk. He was a cutie. Yeah. And uh, uh, your gravel driveway, you got a nice mm -hmm. gravel driveway up there now, I see. Yeah, I forgot I sent you pictures of that. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that showed the street sign, so I wouldn't get too yeah. cocky if I were you. And uh, all I got to do is look for this stupid cartoon character on my screen with his goofy <laughs> fucking hat with his t-shirt says, we ain't got cookies no more, out in BFE somewhere to where there ain't a house within a thousand goddamn miles of you. And I think I'll find you, would be my guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a house and there's a goof in it. So that's probably him. <laughs> that's, that's how most people find me. <laughs> it's a shame you didn't record this. This would be a hell of a lot better than Mama Cass and, and a Choo Choo Boo and whatever is a Dave <laughs> Nelson, the, the porn star and, and these guys, who else did you have on there? That's three of them that yeah. I could have easily took the place of if you count the run-in by dan severn yeah that well that's four, four. uh yeah, yeah I, I won't argue with dan severn running in i mean that's how he got his hands on me three times was running in on matches he didn't have any business in and and i got the short end of the stick because i didn't know he was coming i would have yeah. probably whipped dan's ass if i'd have been prepared for him that would have really shocked everybody but i didn't <laughs> know he was coming and I didn't have time to prepare for the boy, but if I'd have known he was coming, it'd probably been a different story for Dan Sever just between me and you. Well, you've never lost I'd a match, right? Ass. What's that? You've never lost a match. Um, well, no, I have, uh, I have lost a few, but not uh, normally I get amped up for the big stars though. That's how I beat Jerry Lawler. That's how I beat John Cena, Rob Conway, the NWA champion. Of course, Rob, uh, John Cena has been the WWE and WCW champion. Well, the, well, the belt that they now have that WCW used to have. And uh, the ECW champion, Mark Henry, I've beaten him. I punked Brock Lesnar out one day. Well, he tried to punk me out, and he wasn't able to do it. So as far as I'm concerned, I punked him out because he wasn't <laughs> able to punk me out. And had it gotten confrontational back in uh, uh, 2000, it, it could have ended up pretty bad for Brock Lesnar. So just let that be known. And um, who else did I beat? Uh, beat uh, uh, the big show. Beat the big show. Wow. Normally, if you got in heat with Jimmy and OVW, you had to lose to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally normally how that worked out. And uh, somebody was uh, bitching uh, about me bragging over all these champions I've beaten. And uh, normally, when the guys are trying to have a cock growing contest and talk about their accomplishments in wrestling, I'll normally say, "Hey, who here at the table is uh, beaten at the dinner table? Who here's beaten Jerry the King Lawler?" And they'll look around. Oh, well, allow me to hold my hand up. I have, uh, who here amongst us has beaten John Cena. And of course not a hand one go. Oh, oh, I have who here's beaten the big show. Oh, none of you. Oh, well I have, Oh, let me add the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, who here's beaten him. Nobody. Okay. Well, that would be me. And what about the NWA champion, Rob Conway, or at least he was at the time. And once again, no hands rise. 
And then they're all looking around like, oh, fuck you. I mean, you're a manager. You know, shit. I say, hey, motherfuckers, my matches were just as real as yours. <laughs> that so is fuck true. You. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I might sound a bit cocky and shit if this shit aired. So we, we can't do nah, that. No, I won't air it. I can't have Dan Severin pissed at me. I give less than a rat's fuck if Mama Cass is upset. But I've been meaning to tell Maya. I haven't told her yet, but she used to be the bailiff for the martial law segments. She was. I think I remember hearing about that. And plus, she did a lot of entrances for you in multiple languages. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Well, Dan Severn has now taken her place as the bailiff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, she ain't going to be happy about that. <laughs> Dan <laughs> Severn might be in deep shit. We might have a bailiff versus ba in German. She's got no heart and, and, and <laughs> no, no conscious. You know, we might have to do a bailiff versus bailiff martial law episode. Oh, shit. That, that could be interesting. Could be. How often is uh, Severin on your shows? Whenever I uh, want to give him a oh, call. So just, you're back in call. That's like <laughs> yeah, he'll just, he'll just show up like a little puppy dog whenever you want him. Well, but obviously, uh, I don't play that shit. I'm, I'm podcast one now. I'm Realm Network. I'm Russo Brand. And, uh, and I still do my Facebook Lives. Have you ever drop in on any of those anymore? Yeah, I try to. Try to. Well, it's not like there's an admittance fee. They'll let you write in. <laughs> See, I was told they were $5. Well, that's what I told a lot of people, but they, <laughs> some of them figured it out that that wasn't the case. Yeah, because I paid, the attendance was down on a couple of those. They I, actually they had to pay the five bucks. I PayPal'd Maya a couple of times, and I couldn't afford this last one. Well, I didn't. I didn't get any of the money, so apparently Maya's been pocketing <laughs> that cash, bitch. <laughs> maybe I maybe I'll slide Severin a few bucks just to beat her ass if he can. <laughs> it's a fight, though. Maya Maya's a scrapper. She'll 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 put up a good one. All right. Well, shit. I don't know. Anything else you want to cover with me before I get back to business here and then watching my television and cooling out with my dogs? No, I think that's it. And I want, and, uh, just cover your ears for this part, but I want to thank everybody for downloading the show today. It was a lot of fun and I, I'm sorry that I didn't get everybody on that. I wanted to get on. I wanted to have mama Kate here. And Who are you thinking? You're talking to me. You dumb. Fuck. No, I, I told you to cover you your ears. Cast? I told you to cover your ears. Well, I, I didn't. I got fucking headphones on. you. Oh, goof. well take them off and cover your ears real quick. So who are you thinking? <laughs> I'm uh well, you know, when I talk to you, I always feel like I'm doing a podcast and I was, you know, just, well, you said you weren't recording this, you lying oh, bitch. Oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm, uh... No? <laughs> then who are you thinking? Well, I... Or are every... you in post-editing mode? You're just over there editing. Yeah, that's what it is, is I feel like every time I talk to you, we're just coming off a show, and oh, our oh, phone call was so good that you're I just... Actually. Yeah. And then you're sitting there editing while you're talking to me. You're multitasking. Is right. That what yeah. No, Very no, busy. Excuse me there for a minute. I thought you actually recorded this fucking thing. Oh, no. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, all right, well, go on with your bogus bullshit sign off or whatever the fuck you're doing so I can get out of here. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening to the Thanksgiving episode. I wish I would have had Mama Kate and Choo Choo Stew and Kenny Bolin and all the people on that I've been wanting to have on. But well, like I had, said, you had all of them on, but me, you dick. Yeah, I did have all of them on, but you. Yeah. So unfortunately, that's just how it goes. My, my personal friend, Dan Severin. Yeah. My old buddy. So I guess you've gotten enough free shit out of me for tonight. And, uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm going to move on. Uh, but if you ever actually want to have me on your goddamn show and give me some fucking notice, that might be an idea. Yeah. Sounds good. Like I said, just better uh, write me, ask me if I'm mad at you. <laughs> you know, say, hey, Kenny, I'm doing a show two or three weeks down the road. Here's a date and a time. Can you do it? And then I'll tell you yes or no. And then we'll work around that. Just don't drop me a fucking line. And, oh, I was going to have you on this show today that you weren't invited on, but I ran <laughs> out of time. Dick. I really wish you could have been on the show. Well, if I wasn't mad at you before, I am now. So let's just make that clear. <laughs> well, I hope that's not true. Well, we can all hope and wish, I guess, can't we? <laughs> it is Thanksgiving. Christmas is coming. Maybe you can wish for Kenny Bowen's friendship again come December 25th. We'll see what we can do. Sounds Other good. than that, I'm, you're being as you're doing a sign off, let me do one too, like we were doing a show. <laughs> I did say good day. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show and leave a review. See you next time. Do 
anything. 